Enchanté. Hello, lovelies. I'm Angela. This is Parisian Farm Girl. As you may know, I just got back from Paris with many of you. I've got a mean case of jet lag. So what I've done is put together a collection of all your favorite fall videos that I've aired here on the channel. And I will be back next week with brand new content. A bientôt. This fall, I'm working on a project. I am building our family tree and I've partnered with MyHeritage to do that. MyHeritage is the number one family history service. It's fun and easy to build your family tree, even if you know nothing about where you come from. There are so many clues on this website to help you start filling in all those spots. And with instant discoveries, you can get a boost. The website will tell you, we think we've found someone for you. We think this is your person. And when you click that and it's a match, sometimes your family tree can grow instantly up to 40 people. I've really been able to build mine quickly that way. My Heritage can find new family members and records of your ancestors for you with very little effort. And it's incredible. The site puts over 19 billion records at your fingertips. Photographs, ship manifests, census records, everything that you need to flesh out your family tree. You know how I feel about family. I want my children to know where they come from. I want to know where I come from. Thank you to My Heritage for partnering with me on this video. Be sure to click the link in this video description for a free 14-day trial. And if you choose to continue, you'll get that extra 50% off. Season of mists and mellow fruitfulness. Close bosom friend of the maturing sun, conspiring with him how to load and bless with fruit the vines that round the thatch eaves run. To bend with apples the mossed cottage trees and fill all fruit with ripeness to the core, to swell the gourd and plump the hazel shells with a sweet kernel to set budding more and still more later flowers for the bees until they think warm days will never cease for summer has o'erbrimmed their clammy cells who hath not seen thee oft amid thy store sometimes whoever seeks abroad may find thee sitting careless on a granary floor thy hair soft lifted by the winnowing wind or on a half-reaped furrow sound asleep drowsed with the fume of poppies while thy hook spares the next swath and all its twined flowers and sometimes like a gleaner thou dost keep steady thy laden head across a brook or by a cider press with patient look Thou watchest the last oozings, hours by hours. Where are the songs of spring? I, where are they? Think not of them, thou hast thy music too. While barred clouds bloom the soft dying day and touch the stubble plains with rosy hue. Then in a wailful choir the small gnats mourn among the river sallows borne aloft, or sinking as the light wind lives or dies and full-grown lambs bleat from hilly born. Hedge crickets sing, and now with trouble soft, the red breast whistles from a garden croft, and gathering swallows twitter in the skies. Okay, we are fighting the snow and I feel like such a Wisconsin rookie. I should have this down, it's year two, but it's October 30th and we're frantic. I'm frantic and I'm bringing in herbs and I think we've got it pretty much tacked down. I've saved everything I think I need to save tonight. 
the snow will melt. This isn't it. It won't be snow until April. But uh, this was a big day and everything is so fragrant and beautiful, but I'm exhausted and really looking forward to a hearty meal. What an incredible year. This is the second year of this garden. This space that used to be forest and now brings us so much food and so much beauty and so much pleasure. I have so many memories tucked away in my heart. Quiet moments out in the morning, special times with my children together, moments with them individually, just standing in awe at the color and the beauty and the growth. It was a spectacular spring and summer. Autumn was phenomenal. We had such a profound amount of rain in the early autumn, mixed with beautiful days. And the garden gave me everything she had. This is my autumn garden, and it looks like an August garden. The herbs were prolific. The color was phenomenal and I felt like I was given extra time in this space being as far north as we are it felt so prolonged and then as if on cue the goldenrod bloomed and that is the sign that the season is coming to a close the weather is going to start to take a turn and I love that, when it starts to cool off, but there are still roses. When it starts to cool off, but there's still color and fruit on the vine. It's a special in-between time. There's still so much abundance, but winter is right around the corner.
It's this time of year where things begin to move really fast. So you can tell there's going to be no new blooms on the flowers. The evenings are colder. The daytime temperatures are more inconsistent. And this is when we bring in the bulk of the harvest. And when we start to, little by little, tear things out and get the garden ready to shut down. This part feels very cleansing for me. As much as I love to garden, I do need that space within the year to pause and turn my hobbies and interests elsewhere. It's so rewarding to bring everything in and to fill the cooler, my gourds for decorating for Thanksgiving. It's such a time of abundance and closure at the same time. And just like that, it's over. You're tearing things out, cleaning things up, gathering dried flowers to enjoy all winter long. I knew this was it. A hard frost was in the forecast. The death of a garden is a beautiful thing. There are few things as magical as the first hard frost. The way the sunlight catches the ice, the way the plants finally surrender to the changing of the seasons, it is spectacular. Now, truth be told, I was expecting a few more weeks. And 
I wasn't going to get that. We went from hard frost to snow forecast in about 72 hours. So there was a flurry of activity trying to get as much cleaned up as possible before the snow came. I knew the snow was going to melt, but that still means that from, from this point on out, we're working in mud. And so we wanted to get as much done as we could. The garden is clean, it's tidy, it's organized. The beds are buried in compost. Amending the soil is an investment into the garden. It's work that you do now and you reap the rewards literally for years to come. You can never over amend your soil. I know I could harvest herbs almost all throughout the season, but I can't bear to cut them back until the last minute. So I use them for cooking all summer long, but I just let them grow and I let them grow wild. And then right here at the last minute, the herb harvest. Peppermint for tea during the winter. One of my favorite things to do is to make bouquet garni, little herb bundles that I can use in soups and with stews all winter long. Herbs have a romance for me. I really could grow roses and herbs and nothing else. So this was a heady time for me, just me and a pair of scissors and the aroma of my herb garden.
So that was it. The second year of this amazing space has come to a close. And what a spectacular close. Frantically cleaning up and harvesting those herbs the day before to wake up to this splendor is a gift. The garden is always giving. It's always giving beauty. It is always giving life. It is always giving inspiration. It just looks a little bit different throughout the year. As a gardener, I could not be more proud of of the second year of this garden. I cannot imagine what it will be like in years to come. I am savoring my memories and looking forward to the future, and I am profoundly blessed. and this is Parisian Farm Girl and my refrigerator. I thought I would start this episode of what our family of eight eats during the week, during the fall, in the place where we store our food. I used to have an all fridge. It was a restaurant refrigerator. You've probably noticed in other episodes, I never keep my refrigerator in the kitchen because the noise makes me a little crazy. So I always kept it in the boot room. The problem was I would go on my big grocery runs, I would fill that space and everything in the back of the fridge would go rotten because I would forget it was there. So Joel built me this eight by eight cooler in our garage, which is very convenient because here in Northern Wisconsin, it doesn't hardly cost us any electricity for about five months of the year to keep our food chilled. So I wanna show you around and just talk to you a little bit about our food storage, and then I'm going to share with you what our family of eight eats during the week, during the fall. Enchanté. Of course, 
course, this is a shameless opportunity to plug my cookbook. So if you don't have a copy of From France to the Farm, be sure to visit Amazon. I've made it really easy for you. There's a link in the description of this video. Take a second right now, subscribe, and now let me show you this cooler. I store a lot of my root vegetables in wine crates because it's pretty. And obviously I've wallpapered the inside of this cooler. You can watch that episode right here because I want to feel inspired when I go to make a meal. So I love this space. I can keep it nice and tidy because it's big. I can keep it organized. I can walk in with a basket and select what I need to make the meal. And it just sort of keeps me in the right frame of mind for how much work it is to cook for eight people, three meals a day, seven days a week. I love these shelves. They're very reminiscent to me of a really beautiful William Sonoma pantry. This is where I can store all of my fermented foods, any canned goods, all my bulk things from Azur. I like seeing everything organized and it kind of gives me an idea of how to pace myself when I'm when I am making my grocery order because I have a real opportunity to see everything at once. I do use this space as a refrigerator and a pantry because I don't have a proper pantry, but it's plenty big enough for that. As a farming family of eight, what we eat throughout the year definitely changes. In the spring, there's lots of baby greens and spring onions and fledgling produce. At the height of summer, of course, there's tomatoes and fresh cheeses. It's fall, so it's hunting season. All of the produce has been brought in. There's been a lot of canning and fermenting going on. Our diet absolutely changes with the seasons. Monthly, I make a trip south to Green Bay for my Azure Standard drop-off. Azure is a food co-op that specializes in delivering quality, bulk, and natural foods from across the country. They have everything from natural beauty items to animal feed, things for organic gardening. I love it because almost everything is organic and GMO free. There's no membership. It's terribly convenient for me to make that one run and load up the truck and get it done in one fell swoop. These are organic. Well, they're in season, so these are organic. They'll last in the cooler. Good job, kiddo. On mornings where I make this big run, I'm pretty exhausted by the time I get home. And on homeschool days, we tend to keep our lunch food really simple. I'm either tired from making the drive and doing all the unloading and loading, and my kitchen time in the middle of the day needs to be kept pretty easy so that I can focus on schooling, on making these YouTube videos, getting my podcast up, etc. Each week I make some sort of bone broth or stock. My children love it for sipping and of course it's a great foundation to always have on hand for recipes and for soups.
being that it's fall and hunting season, our broth right now is made from wild turkey. And one night this week, I turned that stock and leftover meat pieces into a delicious spinach risotto with a glass of Note Blanche from Dry Farm Wines. Keeping with that autumnal fall hunting theme, another recipe that we enjoyed this week was a venison pot roast. We went out to the greenhouse, brought in some rosemary. We had that with wild mushrooms, cream from our cow, and a delicious big crusty loaf of einkorn sourdough. Each year, I hope to expand what we do on the farm as far as providing food for fresh eating and for storage. We now have a citrus tree that we move outside in the warm weather and bring inside for the winter. Our garden expanded again this year and getting our dairy cow was a tremendous step in the right direction as now we have gallons of fresh milk daily for drinking, yogurt, cheese making, buttermilk, I cannot say enough about the joys of a home dairy. It's a tremendous amount of work each day, but to be sure, the payoff is well worth it. We are literally creating food on our farm of such an amazing quality that we cannot go to the store and buy something of similar value. We are currently raising a beef cow, sheep, turkeys, and two feeder pigs. Much of that will be harvested by the end of this year. We just processed our wonderful ducks, and so now the freezers are full of carcasses for stock and duck breasts for delicious meals, and the cooler has plenty of duck confit for all the decadent meals for fall and winter. Breakfast food is something that I really enjoy, and this past week we enjoyed a family favorite, apple ricotta pancakes. With apples being in season and plenty of ricotta cheese that I make from the whey that's left over from the cheese making, these are a treat that are seasonal and delicious and get everyone's day off on the right foot. Maple syrup, a big slab of butter, who could complain about that? kitchen is usually crammed with people wanting to help and that means kids friends too. It's amazing to stand back and just watch the children do their thing. The girls and a friend made pasta this week. We browned some duck breasts and then cooked them with tomatoes, cream, onions, and red pepper flakes.
one again. Uh -oh. As a work at home mom with six children, I will share with you that there are some days where I just need things to be a little bit easier and a fresh loaf of bread and granola are my main bailout go-tos. This week, along with our pancakes, we enjoyed organic granola and fresh milk and berries. I do save granola for those days when my work at home mom plate is really full. I'm very grateful to have something easy on hand those days. I typically buy a 25 pound box each month from Azur. Anyone with small children knows the power of carbs. Having nutritious bread available for sandwiches or just bread and butter is a must have. Nothing around here goes to waste, whether it's excess milk that I can feed to the pigs to help fatten them up, or whether it's bread that, oops, has gone stale that I can turn into buttered croutons. We started in on our apples this week and put up 11 gallons of applesauce so far. That's a long-standing tradition in our family. I have countless memories of making fall applesauce with my grandmother and the other women in my family. And so this morning, to celebrate those 11 gallons, I made what we call dirty eggs, a combination of sauteed onions, butter coated breadcrumbs, herbs, some leftover cheese curds from some cheese making, and a side of applesauce. It's not gorgeous, but it is delicious. Oh, okay, could you smash that spider? I don't appreciate that. Where? Right there. Where? That's disgusting. What's so funny? I don't want to read them the mic. Oh. We'll share with you that our... Th Here, Mom, don't get so flustered. You're fine. And my Someone stole my pants. Okay, we'll find out. You're not vegan? What? Unsubscribing. <laughs> Thank you for so much. Thank you for so much. Thank you for so much. Thank you for so much subscribing. Thank you for so much I'm not vegan. Yep. Thank you so much for being here. I hope this shed a little light on how we grow our food, store our food, and how we eat our food. Be sure to get your copy of From France to the Farm. Check out this playlist right here. Be sure to subscribe, and I will see you very soon. A bientôt. Enchanté.
Hello lovelies, I'm Angela and this is Parisian Farm Girl. Welcome to my channel. The chimney sweeps have just left the house. There are plenty of hydrangea left over, tons of gourds from the garden. The fall color here in Door County has hit its peak. I think it's time to take the drapes off of the furniture, bring in some firewood, bring in all the fall vibes and get this room ready for Thanksgiving. But before we do that, would you make sure that you're subscribed to this channel Give this video a thumbs up because that way YouTube will share it with other people looking for fall interior design inspiration. Follow over on Instagram, that's where you and I can spend a little bit more time together every day. And if you really want to binge, be sure that you're tuning in twice a week to Homemaker Chic, which is my top rated podcast. We talk about all things homemaking. You can listen to that over on Google and Apple and Spotify. Now I think it's time to stack some firewood, get this room cleaned up, and get it ready for hosting Thanksgiving. right here. They're mustard yellow. They look so great under this arrangement, but we are hosting quite a few people in and out for the holidays and there's going to be a variety of needs. And I wanted everyone to have a comfortable, safe place to sit. So let me get this cloth off from the chimney sweeps. I ran to the thrift store the other day and found this little sofa. Now it's really not that pretty. It's not my favorite, but it will do. It was $20, clean, pet-free, smoke-free. It has some autumnal colors. When I'm done with it, it can go downstairs in the kid cave, but for now, I think it's going to work perfectly for having additional, comfortable, safe seating for our guests for the holidays. So I think by giving the room a very autumnal Thanksgiving feel, I'm going to start it is going to break my heart, but I think I'm going to take off the blue hydrangea because this is very summer. I have the chive blossom garland from this spring. You can watch that video up here. I'm going to take this off and I do love this picture, but it's a little low to the sofa and to keep in with the, the fall winter feeling, I think I'm going to put my hunting picture right here because it's so cool and it's so Wisconsin. I think I'll swap the two out.
Draping throw blankets and even tablecloths over sofas is one of the ways that I quickly change the look of a room. Our big sofa is an old sofa from Ikea. It has seen better days. We have six children. It's been the main sofa in our living room for many years. So I have an Amazon slipcover over the top and then just swapping out those blankets and throw pillows seasonally really makes such a huge difference. And the mantle being the focal point of the room since we don't have a television is another area that I really focus on each season to change the look of the room, to give the room a look that reflects the time of year. I really enjoyed adding some of my leftover hydrangea from my Marie Antoinette project. It brought in those sepia tones, the mauves and the browns. My mom gave me that beautiful Warwick Castle book. It has all these reproductions of watercolors from the castle. And of course, long matches are a signature move for me. Now, with all those leftover hydrangea, there were some projects to be done. So the girls and I went out to the roadside and clipped all the grapevines that grow wild on the roadside and we formed them into wreaths and just jabbed all the hydrangea in there to hang over the mirror over the mantle. And we made another huge one to put over the entryway from this room into the kitchen. I'm so pleased with the way they came out. That look right there is perfect. This room gets a lot of use, a lot of abuse. So the vintage furniture works out really well, keeping it slip covered, keeping it really casual, elegant but comfortable is important. We don't have a television because books are honey for a child's heart and not just a child's, but an adult's heart. They stimulate conversation they stimulate creativity and a rich environment. So we don't have a television in this room. We don't have a television at all, actually. We're a modern family. We have plenty of computers. There's plenty of entertainment going on there. But keeping the books around, that's a favorite. Real learning as a homeschool mom is really important to me. Not locked up in a cabinet, but out right on the edge of each sofa where they can just reach down and grab a book whether it's old homeschool favorites like Story of the World or Robert McCloskey, Blueberries for Sal, One Morning in Maine, favorite Laura Ingalls books, mom's stack of books too. Everyone has books in the living room that they can turn to when we're sitting in there after dinner. And the built-ins house my vintage book collection. Vintage books are absolutely beautiful to me. I love the way they smell. I love their vibrant colors. They're interesting titles just to see Vanity Fair and Milton and some of those titles that we're so familiar with on my shelves really mean something to me. This statue of a mother reading to her children I got last year at a barn sale and I think it really just sets the tone for the room. Now that everything is put into place, it is time to add the final accessory, and that is firelight. 
The holidays, fall, winter, it's all about the cozy for me. Lighting a fire, keeping the oil lamps lit, keeping the candles going, having the chandeliers and other lights on dimmers to keep it cozy and intimate, all cast the perfect spell. enjoyed watching me create my fall living room. We brought in some hydrangea, some gourds, pumpkins. I'm really happy with the way it came out. It's super cozy. Now I can focus my attention on the kitchen, getting ready for my company and the rest of the house. I know that it's been a hard year and it is my hope that you will not let it rob you of your enjoyment of the holidays. So for some more holiday inspiration, check out this video right here. Be sure to subscribe and I will see you very soon. A bientôt. Enchanté. Enchanté. Hello lovelies, I'm Angela and this is Parisian Farm Girl. Bienvenue and welcome to my channel. Today we are taking a look back at some beautiful memories simply because I just got done unpacking from Paris and I'm very busy planting 2,000 tulip bulbs in the garden. I don't know what I was thinking. Let's start with a look back at the first week of fall from a few years ago. These are some sweet moments in the woods and with my children around the campfire.
the next video I'm sharing with you. Here in Wisconsin, our winter evenings get very, very cold, and so I pile as many blankets as I can on my bed. For some of us, having all that extra weight is very, very comforting. This is one of my favorite blankets. I think I got it on Amazon, so I will try to put a link in the description. But don't be afraid to shop your thrift stores, shop your mom's hand-me-downs, whatever you need to do to add that extra weight to your bed and just simply cover it with your duvet or with your coverlet and no one will be any the wiser and you'll have all that comforting goodness when you tuck in at the end of the day. As I am building my bed and putting all the layers on so I can stay nice and cozy this winter, this is a I guess it's a Matt Lazay-esque uh, coverlet that I got at the thrift shop. I love it. It weighs a ton. It's nice and neutral, so I can alternate it with the blanket that I'm about to show you that I got at Kohl's years ago. This is a little bit more of a neutral color, while that one is more pink. And that's what I want to talk about today a little bit, is just keeping that in mind that a lot of times we're sharing our bedrooms with our spouse and so maybe we don't want it to be an explosion of pink maybe we want to have alternatives to choose from this is one of my favorites it's extremely comforting it's very beautiful and it was just about $12 at the thrift shop so keep your eye out never settle when you're thrifting when you're looking for bedding but if you see something that looks like a really good quality Go ahead and pick it up if it's a good price point. If you get home and it doesn't work, then you can just set it right back. What I'm going to do with the Mat Lasse and all the extra blankets to stay warm this winter and my favorite American Blossom Linens is I'm just gonna bring the bed down to its basic form and then I'm going to show you couple looks that you can maybe draw some inspiration from to dress your own bed. The first look I want to share with you is a Paris apartment inspired look. I did purchase that bolster pillowcase at one of the Parisian flea markets, but the look here is a lot of different fabrics, needlepoint, tassels, pillows in different shapes, and very glamorous. So this is another Matt Lise coverlet that I got at Kohl's years ago, probably 12 years ago, in fact right before Amélie was born. It's so beautiful, it's a very pale pink. And sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I use it to cover the whole bed and sometimes like today for my Paris apartment look, I'm just going to use it to drape across the end. And that's something I do all the time is I, I'll drape a blanket on the end or I'll drape even a curtain or a swatch of fabric across the end of the bed just to change the look of it a little bit.
Look number two is a classic French country look. So I'm going to take out some of the shinier pillows and bring in some more hardy textiles. These woven pillows have sort of a muslin type fabric and the little floral pillow is actually the first thing that I ever sewed. Bringing the wicker tray in adds another element of that country feel, a little crochet doily. And I found this big swatch of fabric a couple weeks ago at a thrift shop. I thought it was so beautiful. And it reminded me of old school Charles Faudry French country. So I thought it would be the perfect fabric to drape over the edge of the bed. Of course, to further this look, you could add a little bit more gingham, maybe some more toile. I was just working with what I had to give you an example of a French country look. Now many of us are sharing our bedroom with a gentleman. So look number three involves some masculine touches. Now while it would be so fun to go out and buy some big, gorgeous, sexy Euro shams, again, I'm working with what I have, so I'm going to keep those woven pillows, add some brown. I went into Aiden's bedroom and stole the quilt off of his bed just for this example because it's a cream and beige small plaid print and I thought that would add a little bit more of a masculine element. And a brown throw blanket for the end of the bed. And then I just went around the house and I grabbed some old brown books, a little wooden chocolates box and some corn husk, duck decoys, a little log cabin, just a few things to give it a more masculine look. And I'm kicking myself. What I could have done is take down that beautiful print that I use as my headboard and put up a big wooden framed mirror. That would have really changed the look. And at the last minute, I decided to throw in some fresh sage because it smelled so fantastic. The fourth and final look is un peu de Noël. I think that we forget to decorate our bedrooms for the holidays. Why not bring some of that cozy atmosphere into the bedroom with some fresh greenery, some little twinkle lights. I went down to the living room and stole a few crazy quilt pillows and pillowcases just to bring in some deeper colors. Went outside, grabbed some greenery, a wicker basket, of course brought in some red with some old red romance books. And I went downstairs and I grabbed this favorite wool blanket because I realized it would match the teal on the walls beautifully and add to that Christmas feeling. Thank you so much for being here today. I hope that today you found a little bit of inspiration for your bedroom. Walk around your house, grab some throw pillows, grab an old swatch of fabric or your favorite quilt, and change the mood on your bed. Special Make sure that you've subscribed. Stick around, watch another video, click the Eiffel Tower, find out a little bit more about next year's Paris trips. And like I said, I will see you all again very soon. A bientôt.